Good evening, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of the Seftimore Podcast. Tonight, we're doing audio version of article content creation, how, not, how to not be overwhelmed by the work. This is something that I face a lot. There's burnout and all that type of stuff. That's why I have burnout as my image here on the, uh, on the article itself. When I got into content, uh, creating content, I had no idea how overwhelmed one can get in a short amount of time. I have a back pile of recorded video that I can make in the vlogs at any moment. The fact that I stream during most of my free time, the work continues to pile up. I have probably about 10 to 15 different things that I could, uh, could work on. And I don't get to it all the time because of, of streaming, because that's my passion right now, and that's what I love doing. But with this backlog of work, anxiety tends to creep up in a lot more than normal. This even bleeds into non-content creation work. I get more stressed at my job, around my family, and even alone. There are days when I can't get to the things that I want to do. This sends me even further down the rabbit hole of stress. Besides all the above, there are the projects that I am working on that I can't be present with. The reason is I am thinking about the hundred other projects I'm neglecting as I work on this current one. As I say in mostly all my blog posts, I would have it no other way. At the end of the day, I'm creating. I'm doing something that most people I know can't say they do in their free time. I wrote an article about how to control the uncontrollable in my life. You can check that out on seftamorelive.com. This article and podcast is an extension of that. Here are some things that I do when I'm feeling overwhelmed in my own life. If there's any one thing I can tell you before we begin, is to make sure to breathe. Not talking about shallow breathing, but full, deep breaths. This is said time and time again in self-help advice. The reason that it actually works the reason is that it actually works. I find myself shallow breathing a million times throughout the day. When you are stressed out and you take a full breath, you could feel that stress lift off you immediately. And I'm telling you, try that before anything. Try that before uh, you, know, you get into everything else because it's shown that we shallow breathe most of our day and just getting enough oxygen in our lungs could reduce anxiety and and that that stress level, those cortisol levels. There are too many times in my day that my self-talk is absolute shit. You know how it is. The days uh, I take a step back and I'm mindful of this, my day turns around. But you know these days of just saying I'm a piece of shit, I'm, I'm not going anywhere, just that negativity, negativity, negativity. Um... One of my favorite things is, would you talk to a friend like you talk to yourself? No, because we'd have no friends at the end of the day. And that, that really made an impact on me. Um, self-talk should be a stress relief, not an inhibitor. Our self-talk should be kind and real. Ways positive self-talk have helped me. It helps me focus on one task at hand instead of many. Facing the reality of only being able to get so much done in the day. Figuring out what project is the best to do at the moment and executing on that without outside disruption. Understanding that having a bunch of projects is part of the content creation game. Enjoy the process. This is why I stream. I did writing, blogging, creating video on YouTube, and a podcast year and a half before I got into streaming. The thing is, is that some days when I would sit down, a lot of the times I got burnt out very quickly. And streaming doesn't do that. It's something where I enjoy every day. I enjoy being here, making friends, and being together with these people, and being together with with the audience and people that I could call my friend. No other outlet has, gave me, has ever given me that. But this does. And that's why I say find something that you truly enjoy the process. I, when I write, most of the time, 
I have to say, let's go and get in that mindset and start writing. When I go live, I don't. Streaming has been the only thing that has helped me or that has made me Sunday, Saturday, when I usually didn't do any content creation when I wasn't streaming. It has me not watching because I want to get back online because I have those two off days in my week. I want to spend them with the people that show up every day and that, and that I care for. I get asked a lot about how I put out so much content. The reality is that every moment I get trying to figure out how to prioritize my time to create. Before I get into this, like, I know a lot of, like I said, a lot of people ask me. And the reality of the fact is, is that I've never looked at my time in such a way to where I'm trying to utilize every single moment that I can to create. This is even going to where on my Twitter, I do like, I call it the the annual purge, where I purge things that I might have, you know, just the fluff of, of things that I probably don't need and that make my timeline that much bigger. Because when I get onto uh, a social media network, I want to get in, I want to see the things that I want to see and the things that matter to me. And I want to get out. Maybe I get an idea or, you know, just normal social media usage. But every time I'm on there, I could be editing an article. I could be posting something on Instagram. I could be posting something on Twitter. How I utilize my social media is that I have it to where it inspires me to put out content myself. That way, I'm not really wasting time looking for that inspiration to give out to other people and to, to, you know, turn it into something that that helped me. I'm waiting in line at, at the bank. I'm editing an article on my phone. I talked about this on the Cyber Powered Hour from Pack Devil and Wielding Hammer. Uh, They have a, I was on their podcast last week, and I dive into this extensively. Uh, I've also been utilizing the five-second rule from Mel Robbins. In her book, she explains that we will never have the energy to do everything we want to. This is why we procrastinate so much. Mel explains that we need to shut our brains off when confronting the tasks at hand. To do this, we only allow ourselves five seconds when the thoughts arrive to procrastinate and then go. Implementing this five-second rule has helped me a ton. By using this method, it helps combat the bullshit emotions that arise in our brain. When thinking about the workday ahead, stress will increase. Brains will overestimate how much work we will actually do. In turn, this shoots our anxiety through the roof. Here's a true story. As you know, if you watch me on on Mixer, Tuesdays are, are my days off. Why that is, is because every single Tuesday, I work all day. And... I used to work straight through. Now it's a little bit different. It's not as, as, as rough as it used to be, but this is, you know, we're talking 10 years ago, eight years ago. Um, so I was driving to work and it was, it was six in the morning. I had to get up at five 30 to get on the road for six to get to work. And my brain started just thinking how bad the, the day ahead was going to be. I knew I would be on my feet. I knew I would be, Going through, you know, if the day was busy, is the day going to be busy? Uh, I'm going to be on my feet. Uh, you know, is the, because I do inventory at night, is the inventory going to come out correctly? All these things were going through my brain. My anxiety got so high during that commute. Mind you, this isn't in the article. The commute was literally three minutes away. I was so stressed that morning that I thought I was having a heart attack. Stress. Cortisol, everything so high that I thought I was having a heart attack. I managed to make it to the store. I got it opened. After the store was open, I called my parents and I told them, I'm having, I'm having a heart attack. 
I'm on the verge or something bad. Something's not right. They got someone to come in, went to the doctors. They rushed me to the hospital, got me right in. Uh, and I spent overnight, got all those heart tests done, all that. And uh, the outcome, nothing. My heart health was, was, was fine. My brain and emotions that day stressed my body out so much that I went to the hospital for what I thought was a heart attack. This is the reality of what emotions can do to our stress levels, due to our anxiety levels, and due to us daily. Our brain will over-exaggerate every single situation that we dread. We feel depressed and hopeless unless we figure out how to overcome them. So you might be asking, how does this pertain to content creation? We need to figure out where our time is being spent so we understand the workload. What I do is I use a task manager app on my phone named TickTick. Content creation checklist that I use every day. At the end of the day, I try to have as much on that checklist done as I can. This ensures me that I'm utilizing my time that I could see my workload at a glance. When I see the projects in front of my face every day, it reduces anxiety and keeps my brain positive. You get that feeling of checking things off and you get that feeling of accomplishment from checking those things off every day. If you don't get to everything, it's all right. You'll feel a ton better because after a week, you will see all that you have accomplished. And then it's, it's on to the next one. Oh, it's Monday today. It's time to do it all over again. Here's a big one for me, which I think this is funny because I feel that smartphones are the, probably the best invention to come out of this century. They help with productivity, keep us connected to the world. They also keep us connected to everyone in our real lives. This has changed the way people perceive other people's time. How many times does someone you know get pissed off at you for not answering a call the first time? People make assumptions that because we're not at work, we always have time to respond to them. Do not ever feel bad if you are legitimately busy or working on something and you can't respond to someone immediately. Mind you, if it's an emergency or there's something you need to take care of, obviously take care of that. What I'm talking about is the things that could be handled in a text message or the things that could be handled that are utter nonsense. I get it a couple times a week. You have to be okay saying no to people. And here's, here's what's funny. I feel that I grew up in a generation of cell phones. I feel the older people are, like parents or, or bosses or whatever, I feel the older people are, the worse this is, which I think is hilarious because... These older people, they grew up in a time where they had to be home to take a phone call, or you had to go to a payphone, or you had a beeper. And they're the ones that get the most pissed off when you don't answer your phone, which I think is hilarious. Where our generation, we don't even want to talk. We just want to text. And we're like, and, and the reason... Being is that you have your, 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 your to control your time back. People think you're being an asshole. It's not. It's that you, and I mean, this doesn't even go into content creation. This is going to you getting out of work and sitting and watching Netflix if you want to decompress from the day. That's your time, man. You earned it. Don't, 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 just don't feed into, into, into the, the bullshit like I said, if it's something of importance or something emergency, obviously, use, use common sense here. But I fall into this thinking a lot. The anxiety starts creeping in when I am busy producing some content and I get a call I don't want to answer. We need to start setting boundaries for ourselves. This helps us not feel overwhelmed by people that think we need to answer them. Here's some things to help this. Mind you, like I said, 
use common sense on these things. This is an emergency or family or something important. This does not pertain to that. Stop taking work calls during non-work hours. People have a window of eight hours to reach you every day, minimum. If something is that important, it could be handled within these hours. This helps to provide boundaries for not only yourself, but people calling as well. Understand that most of these calls or messages are probably not urgent. There is nothing I can't stand more. Someone calls me to bullshit while I'm busy working on something. They tell you, that's why they tell you to go and set a timer for yourself of 15 minutes, 30 minutes, and don't look on the internet, don't look at text messages, shut your phone off, put it on silent, whatever. They tell you this because a distraction ruins a workflow. And we have to stop doing that. Time is our most valuable asset. Start thinking on how to optimize your own time without being at the beck and call of others. Be real with people about your time. The majority of people don't care that you're side hustling or doing your hobby or your favorite thing. They look at it as a joke that you have, you, that you have to speak with them. Do not let these people's expectations bleed into your own. Do you and let them know when you get back to them. Another story. This past Saturday, which was a couple Saturdays ago, August 4th was my birthday. I run a family business with my parents. They were going to be away this weekend, so they needed me to run some errands that morning for the business. This is fine. I enjoy helping people, especially when it pertains to our own business. It was also my birthday, and I wanted to get a stream in before I headed out for some birthday shenanigans that day. I got call after call after call. The only thing I wanted to do that morning was get up early and go live. Usually I would take these calls if they were important, but I knew they were just calling me for, to wish me a happy birthday. At that moment, I decided that the shit could wait. I was already devoting time to the business by helping running errands. So I streamed for about three hours, got back to everyone after, and guess what happened? Nothing. Nothing. And your mind is going to start going out of control and saying, oh, they're going to be pissed off at me or whatever. Nothing happened. We talked. People got their birthday wishes in. I got to stream uninterrupted and then got to chat with everyone calling. It was a win-win situation. A major part of feeling overwhelmed when creating content is the fact of not loving the journey. Now, I spoke about this before. We want results and we want them now. Take it from me. This will stress you the fuck out. Make sure when you get into creating, you understand the audacity of what we are trying to do. People, like myself, are out there every day doing tough work. We do this so we can come home and work on something we love. For me, it's streaming on Mixer, all of you, recording this podcast. It's something that I love every day. And I talk to mods that I have, frame it. And I don't think that I'm going to make it on. But when I get back... That's all I could think about. And I get on, and I have the time of my life. Let me be clear on this. My side hustle is that one day, I'd love to play video games for a living. Isn't that, you know, what a lot of us are here for? But read that sentence again. So I'm going to say it again. My side hustle, one of them, besides this podcast and writing and all that, is that one day, to play video games for a living. That's fucking absurd. <laughs> it's also how a lot of people are making a living today. Why did I choose the stream? Because it's something I can do every day. And I love the process of doing more than anything else in my life. I told you before, I write, I podcast, I stream. Only one of those things I don't get burnt out on is streaming. I would do it every single second of every day for the rest of my life. I would do it as much as I can. But I also understand that this is a long and hard road, road filled with grinding. There is nothing more I would like to work towards than one day to be a partner on this platform. When you look at the top of the top and whatever space you want to create in, you will stress yourself out by comparing. You do not need to be at the top of a platform to enjoy it. 
I wrote about this in my article about the Stephen Wilson concert that I recently attended. Stephen Wilson does not sell as many records as a Drake, but he has a niche. He's a, he's a progressive rock artist. So in the sense of Yes or Rush or you know, Genesis from back in the day. These people aren't selling gigantic numbers, but they make a living and they make a very good living on what they're doing. What I'm trying to say is that don't look at the top and say, that's where I got to go. Aim for it. But you can make a living off just having your set community. After this article was written, something actually I could, I could talk about was, was Towelie from Twitch. Towelie's been doing this forever. He's one of my favorite streamers. He's the Warcraft streamer. He streams Warcraft every single day. He's streaming Warcraft. Never went, you know, never went to other games, never went to any, anything else. He plays other stuff, um, but his main game is, is World of Warcraft. And when the new expansion came out, he decided he was going to do a 10-day marathon. Now, not in the sense of he was up 24 hours for 10 days. Uh, he did have another guy that came in. But after it all, he was, after, after it was all said and done, he was like ranked 10 on the Twitch subscriptions. And I watched when he was right below like Lyric and in, in subscription numbers. And he just thanked it. And he said, you know, there's not 100,000 people in this stream. There's not 10,000 people in this stream. He said, there's 2,000 people in it every day. And we built this community that allowed him to make it his career. He's not ninja numbers, nothing like that. But he's making a career out of it. So what I'm trying to say is don't look to the top, but look to people that inspire you genuinely, regardless of their size. Make sure that your assumptions going into creating are real and they're not overblown. A big assumption of creating is that you need to be doing it every day. Now, in the big picture of things, this is true. If you put out a piece of content a day and another puts out five pieces a day, if your talent is equal, the person doing five pieces will achieve success quicker. In the real world, burnout is a real thing. There are times when I go live that I'm not 100%. This is what I just said before. On those days, I will stream for a shorter period of time or take the day off. This allows me to recharge and put on a better show when I return. Don't think it's the end of the world if you can't produce something when you're burnt out. The outcome will be less than optimal. If you took some time off, came back, output would be better along with the finished product. As you know, on this blog and on this podcast, I preach always moving forward a lot. It's because there are going to be so many different emotions we go through on this journey. Regardless if we have a good or bad day, don't quit altogether. If your output is more one week than another, that's fine. As long as we continue to push the envelope forward, we are doing the right thing. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope this helped you in some way. If you're feeling stressed out with content creation. I want to put it out there that my DMs are always open if you ever need to discuss something more in depth. If you're ever feeling down and out or don't feel like you could do it or, or just have questions. My door is always open. You know where you can find me. I want to help people. That's why I make this podcast. That's why I write. Sometimes I'm scared. Sometimes I'm scared to put this out because I don't want people to get the, the wrong idea. I get, I get frightened because I want to open myself to, to, to people and some that I may not know very well. What I'm saying is I'm doing it because I feel that offering value is my number one priority. That's through in, uh, entertaining you, through helping you, through making you realize something, or just have that shoulder you know, to lean on when sometimes you may need it. Thank you, everyone, for listening. If you want to follow me on any platform I create on, septimorelive.com is where the blogs are. 
I also put those on Medium at Seftimore, Twitter, Instagram, Mixer, where this will be recording, recorded live, and the podcast are all at Seftimore. YouTube, once again, is Seftimore Live, just like the blog. Please, guys, share this with someone that you think it could help with, and please subscribe to the podcast. It's free, and it helps me out. Helps me rank on all platforms that it's distributed on, which it is distributed on most platforms, Spotify, Google Play, iTunes, all the, the major podcast uh, services. So thank you for listening again. I'll talk to you again soon. Peace.